Sometimes, extraordinary times bring forward extraordinary heroes. Howdy, my name is Colin McGadigan, and this is the story of James Earl Rudder. This Texan started his life in a small town, born on May 6, 1910, to the son of D. Forrest Rudder and Amy Rudder Powell in Eden, Texas. Rudder attended college at John Tarlington Agricultural College in Stevensville from 1928 to 1929, to start his degree in industrial engineering. In 1930, Rudder transferred to Texas A&M and graduated in 1932. Rudder was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army Reserves upon graduation, but his first full-time job was as a teacher and a football coach at Brady High School. Here, he met and married Margaret E. Williamson and started a family. In 1938, Rudder left Brady after getting an offer to coach and teach football at Tarlington Agricultural College. His career in Texas football was taken off. At the same time as Rudder was attending college, starting his career, and starting his family, far away Europe was descending into chaos. Adolf Hitler gained political control of Germany and prepared for war. When Rudder and his family was moving to Stevensville, German forces were moving into Austria, then Czechoslovakia, then Poland, then Denmark, Norway, and Belgium, then the Netherlands and France. Great Britain tottered on the edge alone against the German war machine. Then the Germans invaded Russia. The whole world was at war, but Stevensville seemed a long way away from the danger. Until Rudd received a summons to active duty, he was no longer a reservist. Across the Pacific Ocean, the Empire of Japan was also on the move. The RA invaded China, but were now moving to expand their holdings. As part of their plan, they needed to neutralize the United States forces in the Pacific especially in the Philippines and Hawaii. They struck on December 7th, 1941. Within days, the United States was at war. Rudder, promoted to lieutenant colonel, put his teaching and coaching skills to good use. He helped train a unit of Special Forces soldiers, the 2nd Ranger Battalion, then forming in Tennessee. These soldiers trained to take on the hardest combat tasks imaginable, including the ability to operate in difficult territories without hope of support or reinforcements. Their mission would send them to the coast of Normandy as part of the D-Day invasion. The position Rudder and his rangers had to seize was Point du Hoc, a 100-foot tall cliff in Normandy overlooking the Atlantic Oceans and crowned by extensive fortifications. What made it dangerous to the Allied landing was the big German cannon there that could shell the landing beaches with ease, slaughtering the American troops as they came ashore. Rudder, just 34 years old, now faced the biggest challenge of his life. Once on the beach, Rangers would have to climb the impossible cliffs with rope ladders and eliminate the German-held machine guns. One American player could not believe what they were asking Rudder and his men to accomplish. He shook his head and said, Three old women with brooms could keep those rangers from climbing those cliffs. Even so, Rudder and his 225 men were ready. Their assault finally started at 4.45 a.m. on June 6, 1944. The Americans left their transports in small boats on rough seas for an hour before they were spotted on the looming cliffs. Their orders were to start the attack at 6 a.m., hoping to surprise the enemy. The problem was so many of the boats drove off course into the darkness. Then, one of the boats flipped, sending nearly two dozen men into the bottom of the ocean before a single shot was fired. Another simply took on water and sank. The Germans spotted the Americans coming to shore. Two more boats took damage, and the Americans were losing men fast. In all the confusion, Rose's boat became lost, and he was late just as the sun rose over what one observer called the longest day. The Americans were late launching their attack, and it would cost them. Now fully alerted to the American threat, the Germans repositioned their troops due to the most damage on the rangers on the base of the cliff. Then came the roar of heavy cannon fire from the sea. The battleship USS Texas with other warships began shelling the ground behind Point du Hoc, keeping the Germans pinned down. Using rockets to shoot ropes to the top of the cliffs and ladders borrowed from the London Fire Department, Rudder and his rangers made the hard climb to the top. They drove off the German defenders and then settled in to defend what they've gained. For two days, the Germans tried to drive Rudder and his rangers off the cliffs, but with no luck. Eventually, the Germans gave up. There were only 90 Americans left from the original 225 that had started the attack. Rudder had been wounded twice. After his heroic actions on D-Day, Rudder left the Rangers and took command of the hard-fighting 109th U.S. Infantry Regiment. 
part of the 28th Division, which saw heavy fighting in the Battle of the Bulge. Rudder survived World War II, earning a promotion to Brigadier General. He returned to Brady, Texas, and went into business. He became mayor in 1946 and served six years. In 1955, he became the Texas Land Commissioner and helped reorganize and improve Texas General Land Office. Then, he went to Texas A&M and became its president. In 1970, the man who had done so much died in Houston, short of his 60th birthday. From the football fields of Brady, to the cliffs of Point Du Hawk, to the halls of the Texas state government, and even the highest point at Texas A&M, Rudder lived an amazing Texas life. Mm -hmm.